Okay, well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, Chris, how are we doing? It's going good. Today, I am fortunate enough to have Mike Parker with Parker Amusement on the line. And he's gonna share with us today some things that are going on for him as a street operator and um, currently with the whole COVID thing. And then we're gonna talk about, you know, uh, I guess we'll go a little bit past uh, present and future. So uh, let's start with the present though, because what you've got going on in New Mexico is I guess not unlike other operators, but yet you've had to endure it for longer. So just give us kind of an update of what's happened since the middle of March and where you're at today. Well, the, the big problem we're at, our state's totally closed down at this point. Uh, restaurants just recently opened back up at 25% of their capacity. To, for food service inside uh, patios or have been open at 50% for the last month or so, but our all, all amusement equipment is totally shut down. So that includes video games, the photo booths, uh, to jukeboxes. Jukeboxes we get away with a little bit because of the mobile apps, but for the most part we're shut down. She's really choked us down. Um, and our numbers are lower than probably uh, the rest of the operators across the country. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad, I don't know, but uh, we're definitely choked down, not making any money. Right. Still no uh, progress forward. Um, not at this point. Uh, you know, our numbers are down. They, they should be starting to open this up, but uh, you know, I've, I've got my, my own opinion on it. Some of it's a political, some of it's, um, you know, we do have a problem, but but our numbers are lower than most states. And right. uh, uh, per capita. Uh, the amusement end is just gonna be the bottom of the pit coming back. Wow, okay, so that's that's um, kind of the directive of your governor so far is that you're gonna be the last ones to open? Pretty much, that and bars, you know. Um, you know, even the restaurants earlier in the year, they were open at 50% capacity, but she kept, you know, the equipment Video games, air hockey's, whatever, photo booths, all that shut down also. You know, and again, I, I'm not throwing stones. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, but that's where we're at. So Okay, well let's go to pre COVID. Let's talk about the the good times. Um, it was several years ago, we're gonna go back a few years. It was several years ago where kind of out of the blue, I got a call from you and you said to me, you said, Chris, I'm gonna order some photo booths. I'm gonna start um adding those into my into my route and i'm like well cool that's awesome and um i remember me or remember you telling me that you were going to order five booths and right. uh, and and my first thought was like five um and i remember asking you i go do you know where you're going to put these do you know what kind of locations you're going to put these in and you said no, I'm not sure, but I'm, you know, but I've got an idea. I've got a couple in mind. Right. Do you remember that conversation? Yeah, pretty much. Probably wasn't the brighter thing I did, but, uh, you know, we did it. It worked. So you, you, you probably ought to have locations first before you start. But well, uh, yeah. the, 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 the thing is, is we had good luck with the, the previous booths that we had bought. The numbers were good and they were running good. Um, I can't remember exactly I, out of the, the five or the six that we agreed on. I think we had a couple of locations, but we wanted to add them to our, to our existing route because it's a different form of income. It, it doesn't take away from the video or the cranes. Um, it, it's just, it's just a different part of the income. It's, it's an increase to the income. And that's what we're trying to do is increase our, our income on the route. Um, right. A lot, a lot of people argue the fact that, well, you've got cameras on your phones and all of this. Very true. You, you know, you can send it, uh, email it, whatever you want to do. But you can do the same thing with the booth, or they can get the picture right in and there. And the photo booths are a lot like redemption. People want the picture then. Um, you know, especially the younger kids, they want something to take and show, and and it, it's been done very well for us. So, 
that was wow. kind of the motive for doing the five. I think we went back and ordered another one, made it six or something like that. Well, you actually made it seven. And how the how oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, you made it seven. And so what I and and it made me very nervous. It made me very nervous that you're gonna you know take that big of a bite when you you know really you know you're gonna you're you were diving in and you didn't know have any clue what the temperature of the water was really you know and yes, well, you probably no, you but days. but I knew that that the numbers on the ones we'd had had been good you know and and I felt confident enough you know maintenance problem was, was basically zero um you know just we just don't have a lot of problems with them uh, and we could stick them out hundreds of miles away our we and we run that far in our route and and there's just no worry on it so. right well i made you promise me that when you went to solicit locations for putting in the booth that you would solicit with just the photo booth not your jukeboxes not your atms not anything else and that's what you did right right we have we have quite a few locations that are you know, um, um, the trampoline parks have been very successful. Um, uh, there's um, there's small locations that have worked out that we've put stuff in that are that we do not have the amusements or the cranes in. You know, it's a it's a total separate income, and and then we we added a bunch to our route. But uh, but when we solicited most of the ones we solicited, we did not have the amusement stuff in them at that time and uh, the operators there didn't have a issue with us putting them in right well and then the 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 seven lo seven booths that you bought the seven out of those seven locations i think five of them were new is that correct they five of them were what now they were new they were brand new locations to you oh yes <clears throat> yes yes that we didn't have you know right yeah exactly they were they were solicited strictly on the on the merit of the of the photo booth and nothing else. Okay, and that's kind of what I uh, what I wanted to share with everybody is that, you know, and it was shocking to me. I mean, it, that you did that, and in 30 days, you've got five new locations just soliciting with the with the photo booth. When as you walked in the door, and then you shared everything else that you um, that you're able to offer. Right. And that's. I just want that to be a fair statement. Is that? Is that? Yeah. I want it to be your words, not mine. Oh sure. No, no, no. That's that's very true. That's very true. Uh, okay. That's exactly. You know, five new locations. In those five, we have eventually picked up some other equipment and stuff. But those locations were picked up with just strictly the photo booth. Um, okay. And if someone else had equipment that was with their base, their their blessing. There was no. Stepped on any toes or any of that. It was, you know, it was strictly five new locations. So, okay. and then they paid for himself. They positive cash flow. Right. Yeah. Cause I know, I know you took advantage of uh, some of the finance that we had at the time. And, and um, so that's what it's all about, right? That's what we're trying to do. It is. The, the creative financing will create positive cash flow. It, it, you know, we're all in a cash flow by one way or the other. And, and it's expensive to get into stuff. It doesn't matter what it is, but but the but the the promotions and I can't even remember what the promotions were then. I don't know, probably through Firestone, I would assume. But um, you know, it just all worked out very well. So yeah. So now tell us what you're kind of in a, a, a in a situation now where you're you're not able to do much. But what are your plans? Um, post covid i know you're doing you're doing some some things in uh texas because you do operate there so you're you're able to move forward a little bit there but what is your what is your plan moving forward um with your route and uh and and how do our booths fit in well actually we we'd already planned going into 2020 2020 was really expected to be a good year for everyone financially the economy was good the first three months of 2020 were excellent for us, or two and a half months, I guess, until uh, March. But our plan, and it's going to be, we'll do this going into 2020. It'll be a little slower, but but we we've earmarked probably another four or five locations that it will be separate locations 
for some of the new style booths that are coming out. Um, uh, pizza restaurants, uh, uh, hamburger places, mall type of stuff. And we've already had an agreement with a lot of these people, you know, once we get post COVID and kind of see where life is going to go, um, we'll start, we'll put out at least another four or five going into the first of the year. Um, and we're going to, and we'll continue to look for locations. Um, we haven't pushed out a lot, but that was a lot of going into the first part of the year. We've just had to put it off. Um, but I, I'm going to continue, you know, we'll, we'll get back to whatever the new normal is and, Photo booths will still, you know, it'll be a huge part of our, our development. We're going to continue to move forward with them. Uh, we've got some theaters and a couple of bowling alleys that we have picked up that we won't take over until the first of the year, but we'll definitely have this equipment in those locations away from the amusement uh, part of it. Okay. Well, anything else that you want to add about your experience um, operating photo booths and um, anything, any kind of advice you could give to an operator that's, you know, kind of on the fence or thinking about, gee, should I, or, you know, what are, what are some of the things that you could give, what's the best advice you could give them? Well, it's, it's separate income from your video and your, and maybe your cranes or your redemption. It's total separate, different markets. Uh, and it needs to be away from, you know, in your game room or wherever you're at. It needs to be out by itself. And there's been our experience is the best results on it. Um, you know, even hallways, uh, uh, just away from that type of equipment. It's, it's, it's a separate entity and it will be separate income for you or cash flow. Um, so you're adding, you're adding value or cash flow to your route. Even if you just put it on your existing route and don't do not pick up any more locations, you're going to add some some income to your existing location. Uh, I think any location with kids ought to have one. Um, you know, even if you took out a little bit of video and put the the photo booth in, I think it'll increase your revenue. So, but you 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 know it's long and they're long term. So you you really need to. I, I would suggest it for anyone uh, to add to their route. And when in some of these locations that you've been in, Mike, um, is what do you see the revenue do? Is it do you see it like when you add a new piece to a location where you get the new money right away and then the revenue drops off, or what are you seeing with the revenue long term? Well, the you know whatever you know each location is different uh, you know as far as revenue, but whatever we see coming in the, the initial revenue pretty much holds it on. You know, you're, you could fluctuate each week like anything, um, but if it, you know, if it makes you $200 a week, $300 a week, it's pretty consistent making that from then on, it, and it doesn't pull away from your, your other revenue. It's a, it's a total different income stream. Um, you know, you get adults in um, where you're not going to get the adults in necessarily playing the games and stuff, um, and, and then you get kids in because they want something in their hand. Uh, right. It's just a total income difference, but the income is 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 steady. Whatever it comes up to is pretty much what it's going to be. All right. Well, wonderful. So um, I guess this will end our podcast. I thank you so much for your business, and I thank you so much for sharing your experience, so that other operators can learn and hopefully benefit along, um, just like you have. So thank you, Mike. You got it. Thank you so much for the help, Chris. All right. Uh -huh.